Within the developing fetus, the organ that is involved in exchanging gas between the mother and the fetus is called the placenta. Now, the placenta has other functions as well, but in this lecture, we're going to focus primarily on its function in gas exchange. So let's begin by actually looking at the structure of our placenta. So this is a diagram of the placenta. So we have the umbilical cord shown here that contains two types of blood vessels. We have the umbilical vein shown in red and we have umbilical arteries shown in blue. So the umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood that contains carbon dioxide from the organs and tissues of that fetus and to the placenta itself and it carries them to these chorionic villi, these extensions of the chorion known as the chorionic villi and within the chorionic villi we have the tiny blood capillaries that belong to the circulatory system of that fetus. Now these entire chorionic villi are found inside a pool of maternal blood and that pool of maternal blood essentially oozes out of these maternal blood vessels that are found in close proximity. So remember when the placenta was actually developed the chorion released these digestive enzymes that digest the tiny holes inside these maternal blood vessels and those holes essentially allow the blood to actually leak out. So the way that the exchange takes place is within the maternal blood, within the pool of maternal blood, we have oxygen and oxygen moves down its concentration gradient from the pool of blood and into the capillaries of that fetus. At the same time, carbon dioxide is deposited out of the capillaries of that fetus and into the pool of blood and eventually picked up by the maternal blood veins and that carries the carbon carbon dioxide to the lungs of that mother and the lungs expel the carbon dioxide to the rest of that environment at the same time. When the lungs inhale, they bring in oxygen and that oxygen is ultimately brought into this pooling area of that maternal blood. Now, when the oxygen is picked up, it is picked up by these blood vessels and then the blood vessels co uh, connect to the umbilical vein and the umbilical vein, this blood vessel shown in red, actually carries the oxygenated and nutrient-filled blood to the organs, tissues, and structures found within that developing fetus. So this is how gas exchange actually takes place. Now the question we want to ask in this lecture is, what exactly makes the placenta effective and efficient in actually exchanging that oxygen and what allows it to exchange that oxygen carbon dioxide in the right direction. So remember, we want the placenta not only to exchange the gases quickly and efficiently, but we also want to exchange the gases in the right direction. So we must make sure that oxygen always travels into that fetus and carbon dioxide is always removed from that fetus and moves into the blood capillaries and the blood system of the mother. So there are three factors that affect the efficiency of of that placenta and one of them is the type of hemoglobin molecule that is found inside the blood of that fetus. So recall that oxygen is actually a nonpolar molecule and what that means is it cannot readily dissolve in the blood plasma and so it requires a special type of protein carrier to carry it from point A to point B and this type of protein is known as hemoglobin. Now, the type of hemoglobin molecule found inside adults is different than the type of hemoglobin that is found inside the fetus. Before we actually see why this is the case, let's discuss what the difference is between the adult and the fetal hemoglobin. So, in adults, we know that the hemoglobin consists of four subunits. Two of these subunits are alpha subunits and the other two subunits are beta subunits. So we have alpha 1 and alpha 2 that combines with beta 1 and beta 2 to form a protein tetramer that we call the adult hemoglobin. So this is what it looks like. We have alpha 1, alpha 2 shown in green and we have beta 1 and beta 2 shown in orange.
Now, when we form the adult hemoglobin, the adult hemoglobin actually contains a cavity inside a space that is capable of binding a molecule called 2,3-BPG. Now, what exactly is 2,3-BPG? Uh, well, 2,3-BPG is a molecule that is a byproduct of cellular respiration. So, when cell respiration takes place inside the cells of the adult individual, they produce 2,3-BPG. And 2,3-BPG can actually bind into that cavity, into the space that is found in the adult hemoglobin. Now, as soon as the binding takes place, when the 2,3-BPG binds into that space inside the adult hemoglobin, it creates a change in the structure of the adult hemoglobin and what that does is it decreases the adult hemoglobin's ability to actually bind to oxygen. It lowers its affinity for oxygen. So when the binding takes place, that adult hemoglobin is much less likely to actually bind oxygen and carry oxygen from point A to point B. Now, what about the fetal hemoglobin? Well, just like the adult hemoglobin, the fetal hemoglobin also consists of four subunits. It contains alpha-1 and alpha-2 as shown in the following diagram, but it doesn't contain beta-1 and beta-2. Instead, it contains a slightly different two subunits, gamma-1 and gamma-2. And when these four subunits create the tetramer fetum, uh, fetal hemoglobin, notice we no longer have that cavity, that space inside the hemoglobin that can accommodate the 2,3-BPG. And so unlike the adult hemoglobin, the fetal, uh, the fetal hemoglobin in the presence of 2,3-BPG does not actually bind to 2,3-BPG. And what that means is if we compare the affinity of these two hemoglobin molecules in the presence of the same concentration of 2,3-BPG, we see that because the, fetal, uh, the, because the fetal hemoglobin doesn't actually bind the 2,3-BPG, that means its affinity for oxygen will be much higher than the affinity uh, for oxygen of adult hemoglobin. And if we plot this curve on the x-y axis, where the x-axis is the partial pressure of oxygen, given in millimeters of mercury and the y-axis is the percent saturation of that hemoglobin, we get the following curve. So the blue curve is the curve that describes the adult hemoglobin while the red curve describes the fetal hemoglobin. And notice at the same partial pressure, let's say at 40 degrees partial pressure of oxygen, the adult hemoglobin has much less saturation than the fetal hemoglobin does and that's because fe a fetal hemoglobin does not actually bind to 2,3-BPG and so it is much more likely to actually attract other oxygen molecules and bind to those oxygen molecules. So we see that the maternal red blood cells have hemoglobin, the adult hemoglobin, that binds oxygen much less readily than the fetal red blood cells that contain the fetal hemoglobin. And as a result, the oxygen will be much more likely to actually move from the blood of that mother and into the blood of that fetus that contains that fetal hemoglobin. Now, aside from this, there are two other factors that also facilitate the function of the placenta, facilitate the gas exchange process. So, the movement of oxygen from the mother to the fetus can be facilitated by three factors. So, one of them is higher affinity of fetal hemoglobin for oxygen than the adult hemoglobin. The other is the fact that inside the blood of the mother, we have a higher concentration of oxygen than inside these capillaries of that fetus. And so because of this difference in concentration, because the concentration of oxygen is naturally higher inside the blood of that mother than inside the blood of that fetus, oxygen will tend to basically move down its concentration gradient, down its pressure gradient from the mother and to that fetus.
So the final factor that facilitates the diffusion of oxygen across our placenta is something called the double bore effect. So let's recall what a bore effect is. So the bore effect is basically the ability of carbon dioxide to affect the affinity of hemoglobin. So the more carbon dioxide we have in the blood, the less likely that hemoglobin will actually bind onto that oxygen. And conversely, the less CO2 we have in the blood, the more likely our oxygen, our hemoglobin will actually bind to, uh, to oxygen. So what exactly do we mean by double bore effect? Well, let's take a look at the following diagram to see what the double bore effect is. So let's suppose that this purple line is basically our placental membrane and our gas exchange takes place across the placental membrane, which is basically this chorionic membrane shown right here in purple. So this is the side of the mother, this is the side of the fetus. So what happens is carbon dioxide moves down its concentration gradient from this side, from the uh, fetus's side to the mother's side. Now, as it moves this way, what happens is the concentration of the carbon dioxide begins to increase within the side of the mother. And by increasing the CO2 concentration, that makes the hemoglobin much more likely to actually release the oxygen. And once oxygen is released, we have the Bohr effect. So that is the Bohr effect. So as a result of the release of oxygen, uh, as a result of the release of carbon dioxide onto the mother side, we have the Bohr effect take place on the mother side. The carbon dioxide affects the affinity of hemoglobin, decreases its affinity for hemoglobin, uh, decreases hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen, oxygen is released, and then it moves into the side of our fetus. Now, at the same time that carbon dioxide concentration on the mother's side is increasing, the carbon dioxide on the fetus's side is decreasing in concentration because this is moving this way. Now, when we decrease the concentration of carbon dioxide, that means less of the CO2 can actually affect that hemoglobin on the side of the fetus. And so we also see a Bohr effect taking place on this side. So less CO2 means more of that hemoglobin will be able to bind to more of that oxygen that is coming in. And so this is the double Bohr effect that takes place not only on the mother's side, but also on the side of the fetus. So these three factors actually facilitate the exchange of gases inside our placenta. So we have the, the ability of that fetal hemoglobin to actually bind to oxygen much more readily than the adult hemoglobin. That is factor number one. Factor number two is the fact that inside the mother, we have a higher amount of oxygen than inside the fetus. And so it moves down its concentration and pressure gradient from the mother's side to the fetus's side. And finally, we also have the double bore effect. So the fact that carbon dioxide is being pumped, is being expelled into the blood of that mother causes the hemoglobin inside this mother's area to basically decrease its affinity for oxygen. And because of that, more oxygen is expelled, is released, and then the oxygen moves into the capillaries of the chorionic villi. And as the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases within the capillaries of that fetus, we have less CO2 that can affect hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen. And so because we have less CO2, we have more of that fetal hemoglobin that will be able to bind to oxygen. And this is called the double Bohr effect.